Today we're going to build some modular, mid-century modern furniture that goes together without any fasteners. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Click on the link in the description to find out more about my favorite home security system. I don't typically do a lot of projects with domestic hardwoods, and that's mainly because there isn't a good place within an hour of me to get it. But I recently discovered Forest to Home, which sells these really nice domestic hardwood lumber kits, and I'm going to use some 1x6 walnut for this project. They sent me 6 foot long boards, and I'm going to start by just trimming off about 5 inches with my circular saw. The majority of the legs are going to be made out of 4 inch wide steel flat bar. This flat bar is going to go around the walnut, so I use the walnut to measure the length. I mark the line with a red colored pencil, and then I use my angle grinder to just cut just outside of the line. I start by just going very lightly and slowly to make sure that I'm following the line, and then once I have a groove I can get a little bit more aggressive and cut all the way through. For the legs themselves, I started by cutting 26 inch long pieces of the flat bar. I'm going to get two legs out of each one of these pieces, so I cut two of them. I then clamped down a piece of steel corner to corner to serve as a straight edge so that I could cut these 26 inch long pieces into two triangles. Once again, I started by cutting very lightly into the steel just to establish a nice straight groove. Then I removed the straight edge and cut all the way through. The angle grinder has become my absolute favorite tool. Not only can you cut with it, you can also sand and even power carve. It's so versatile that I actually keep about three or four around just so I don't even have to switch out different blades or attachments. It only took me about 10 to 15 minutes to cut four identical triangles, and then I was ready to figure out the angle that they're going to sit at. I'm making up this design as I go, so I started by measuring an inch down from the corner and then drawing a line to the other corner. But that angle really didn't seem aggressive enough, so I re-measured an inch and a quarter down and then drew a line. I then cut along this line with my angle grinder and used the first piece I cut as a guide for cutting the second one just to make sure everything's all lined up. I'm really trying to get more people, especially woodworkers, into metalworking. It just opens up new possibilities and it's a lot easier than I used to think. Also, all of the steel for this project only cost about 30 bucks. I need to trim the bottom of the legs so that they're parallel with the top. And to do this, I just used a 20 inch long piece of plywood to act as a reference line. And once again, I just used the first piece I cut to guide the additional cuts. I also need a piece of steel to go underneath the walnut, and for this I used a 3 inch wide piece of flat bar, and once again, I just cut it to the width of the walnut. So I'm almost ready to weld, but first I just used a flap disc on my angle grinder to clean up all the edges. Now the bench top is going to be very narrow, so I want to bend the legs outward a little bit to provide stability. So to do this, I'm going to draw a line right at the bottom piece of 3 inch plate steel. I cut just a little bit past halfway through the steel, just to create a line that will make the steel easier to bend later. I then used magnets to hold the top plate in place, and then welded it to the leg. I started by just lightly tacking the steel together check to make sure everything was still square before laying in a heavy bead that I then ground out nice and flush. I've actually done a whole series on metalworking for beginners and I'll put a link to that playlist in the description box below. I then lined up the other leg and welded that into place as well. I'm using my Forney welder which costs about $400. It's the machine I recommend to beginners. I've used it on all my furniture projects, and I even did all of the welding on the container house with it. I don't mind the aesthetic of exposed welds, but I just ground these out so that the piece would sit flat on my tabletop, which would make it easier to get a more accurate bend. I used that short piece of walnut as a spacer, added the 3 inch wide flat bar, and then just lightly tacked that in place, and I was careful not to fill in too much of the cut lines. I'm going to want to bend the steel along these lines, so I welded up a jig to go around them to give me a nice corner to bend against. I clamped the legs down and then just pulled on the legs by hand and was able to bend them. 
I used a speed square to make sure both sides were even, and then went back in with the welder and filled in along the lines that I had scored. Now the heat from the welding can cause the steel to warp and move a little bit, so I recommend going slow and just doing a few tacks first to stabilize it before going in with a full heavy bead. Even though the bent legs are now reinforced with a little bit of welding, I still want to make sure that I support them with crossbars that are welded parallel to the floor. So I used another scrap piece of plywood, this one 13 and a half inches wide, as a guide to hold a two inch wide piece of flat bar in place while I mark the angles that I'm then going to cut with my angle grinder. I then used spring clamps to hold the piece in place while I welded it to the legs. I did a nice heavy weld on the inside corner, but I also welded along the outside as well, and then ground that down flush. The legs are done, but I used a flap disc on my angle grinder just to round over any sharp edges and clean up the welds a little bit. I then put a wire cup on an angle grinder and brushed all of the surface area of the legs. This just gives it a nice dull appearance and removes any other flaky mill scale that came on the steel. The boards from Forest to Home are already pretty smooth, so I just had to do a little bit of sanding, starting with 80 grit pads, then 150 before finishing with 220 grit. I also rounded over the edges and corners a little bit. Now it's really important before applying a finish to remove all the dust from the wood. I then applied some simple finish by Maker Brand. This is a plant-based finish that's really easy to apply. You just use a rag and slop a lot on, wait 10 minutes, and then apply another top coat just to even it all out and cover up any dry spots. And then you wait another 10 to 15 minutes and you rub out all the excess with a nice clean rag. And one of my favorite parts about Simple Finish is that it's also great on steel because it's just linseed oil and wax. So I could just wipe this right onto the steel legs as well. Obviously it doesn't soak into the steel, so I just waited five minutes before rubbing off the excess. The legs slide on nice and easy, and this 5 foot 7 bench definitely bends if you sit in the middle, but is still strong enough for three people. It's fine as it is for a bench that's 4 feet or shorter, but for anything longer, I recommend adding an additional steel support. But before I show you how I made that support, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an incredibly effective, reliable home security system that will make sure your home is safe. You just order it online or over the phone and it's delivered right to your home and you set it up yourself in under an hour. I've now set up these systems in three different houses and it's been easy every single time. It's a comprehensive system that all starts with the base station. And this is the easiest part. You just open up the box and plug it in right to the wall. From here, you just plug in all the cool accessories that work with this system. Everything from things that'll tell you if somebody's opening a window or door, temperature sensors, HD cameras, and even just general safety stuff like smoke detectors. I didn't even need any power tools to set up the system because most of the accessories just stick right to the wall. Once you're all set up, your home is professionally monitored 24-7. If anything happens, they'll make sure the police get called. I get really impatient with technology, particularly when a setup process is long and complicated, but this is super easy. I really like that their instruction manual has real photos of the actual devices and doesn't look like some stupid drawing that a 10-year-old did. Check out how easy it is to install these sensors. All you do is peel off the adhesive backing and stick them right to the door. They're really small and streamlined, so you barely even notice them. And now, anytime the system is armed and the door is opened, you'll get an alert. There are so many different devices to the system, and they're all equally easy to set up, but go check it out for yourself. Go to simplysafe.com slash homemade to learn more. That's simplysafe.com slash homemade. You won't be disappointed with Simply Safe's award-winning home security that keeps your home safe around the clock. It's really reliable, easy to use, and there are no contracts. So last time, simplysafe.com slash homemade. All right, back to the build. So I kind of like that this design doesn't require any fastener, so I wanted to keep it that way. So I took a piece of one and a quarter inch steel angle and cut it at a 45 degree on either end. I used a flap disc to round over the sharp cut edges and remove the mill scale. I then welded on two pieces of three inch wide flat bar to either end with about two inches of overlap. 
these steel tabs are going to slide into the cavities of the legs. So I placed the center support on a full six foot long piece of walnut, centered it, and then traced the outlines of the steel plates. I set the depth of my Ryobi palm router and then cut a recess so that these steel tabs can sit flush to the bottom surface of the walnut. I then sanded the walnut and applied some simple finish and the legs slid right on and held the steel to the walnut. The bench still has a little bit of flex to it, but I can be assured that it will bend and not break. And if I wanted to remove that flexibility, all I'd have to do is drill some holes through the steel and screw it to the walnut to create a stiffer single beam. But I kind of like the fact that I didn't have to use any glue or mechanical fasteners. Now I've been doing this YouTube thing a while and I know I'm going to get a bunch of questions about what about your floors, what about your floors? Well, here's a handy trick that I use to protect floors from sharp steel legs. I just take some clear flex seal and dip the whole can right over the legs. I wait a couple hours in between coats and normally after about three to four coats I have a nice rubbery but also very minimally visible floor protector. I really like skinny benches like this either at the foot of a bed where you can kind of lay out the clothes that you're going to wear the next day or in mud rooms or entryways that have narrow spaces and you want a place to kind of sit and put your shoes on but not block too much of the traffic. But let's head back into the studio and break down this project in design notes. So I really like the look of the design and the novelty of how quickly it goes together is pretty cool. I'm actually thinking about maybe making some hooks that could go on the wall so you can kind of display the individual pieces like some sort of abstract art and then when you need extra seating or something you just pop them down and put together the bench in a matter of minutes. Now that being said, I'm kind of thinking now though that Maybe an outdoor application of a similar design might make more sense because if you, for seasonal furniture, that's where the kind of quick speed for assembly and disassembly where you can put it away or then bring it out when the weather's nice might just be a little bit more practical. Um, so I'm thinking of maybe doing a tropical hardwood version and either a powder coated or spray painted version of the legs there. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen the stories where I talk a little bit about the inspiration for this piece in particular. So it was sort of a weird combination of looking at some different sawhorses where the wood slides in. So that was sort of the functional inspiration, but aesthetically, it actually came from Star Wars. I was kind of looking at the most recent uh, series of movies and Kylo Ren's spaceship kind of uh, inspired the aesthetic, although more the aesthetic of what it looks like upside down. So it was kind of a fun project because I could kind of take something as sophisticated and complex as sort of sci-fi imagery and then mix that with something as pragmatic as a software. So uh, very fun project. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, we'll probably do another version of this. I was actually thinking of maybe doing something where I do like a T-shape in here so that I can actually do a more pre-assembled version of the wood so I don't need a steel support. I could just use a wood stretcher and then that just all fits in. But uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Oh, yeah. And check out our podcast too. We had a nice discussion of it there. It's called the Modern Mater Podcast. All right. Bye, everybody.